Fun Master Mike, can you remind me what's the most important thing about playing a chess game? That's an easy one. It's winning. Well, not exactly. What's mm. another thing? Uh, it's got to be the trophies. I'm going to give you one more guess, Mike. Hmm. All the stars I earn on Chess Kid? No, the most important thing about playing a chess game is making sure you play it the right way. That you play the game fairly, by the rules, and in a way that both players have fun and got something out of the experience. In this game, I'm looking at you, Mike, and you have five and a half to my two and a half. You've been killing me today. You are owning this match. I'm not really interested in playing you anymore, so I'm just going to let my time run out. Once I get a whole minute gone, I know that the system will just abort the game and I'll be able to go play somebody else. That's cool with you, right? Well, first of all, you're going to lose rating points if you do that, but it's not cool at all because it's my turn to play white, and you can't just abort because you don't like my rating or the color you were given or your score against me, so you better make a move. All right, fine, you convinced me. You're right. That's a great point. I'm not allowed to quit a game once it's started, whether I like who I played or not. All right, well, on that note, now i got to make a few moves and, and see if I can try to make a comeback in this little battle of ours where you are up three games. Um, but what happens if the game goes wrong again for me? If I play a move like d5 here, I've forgotten my opening theory. I thought this was a good move, Mike, but as soon as you take that pawn, I suddenly realize I really don't like my position here. Yeah, there's more attackers than defenders, so I'm going to eat that one. Well, it's okay now that now that I've even gotten this far and I'm just going to lose again, it's okay for me to just walk away altogether, right? Maybe I should go get a snack right now, or maybe I could even go do some puzzles and just let this game sit. You don't mind sitting here for another 13 minutes and 42 seconds, do you? Well, I think, Papa Bear, that hurts you and me because, number one, you're not attempting to make a comeback. You're not learning how to fight back from a worse position. And number two, think of how that makes me feel, sitting here for 13 or 14 minutes with nothing to do, when I could be playing multiple more chess games or solving some puzzles or something. You would hate it if I did that to you, just sat there for 13 or 14 minutes. That's what parents do when they're punishing their child. Go sit in the corner. We don't want to make kids sit in the corner. We want them to play chess. So if you really feel like you have no chance at a comeback, you should resign, not make the other person sit there. But I think you could still stick with this one, Papa Bear. All right, well, you convinced me again, so I'm not allowed to abort even, even if I don't like the matchup, and I'm not allowed to abandon even if I don't like how the game is going. Two good lessons learned. I'll go ahead and take back this pawn here on C6 and wait for your next move. Yeah, good life lessons too, but I think I saw a video on this, Sacrifices on F7, my favorite. Oh no, I just realized I missed another tactic. Well, now... Now that I know I can't abort the game and I know it's wrong to abandon, I'm going to rely on my third trick if things aren't going my way, Mike, and I'm going to start offering you some draws. I'm pretty sure you're cool with me offering you a draw when I'm in a worse position. Yeah, sometimes I thought when my opponent offered me a draw, it was a way out of losing. But then it occurred to me, my chess coach said, if somebody offers you a draw, it's because they think they're worse. So if I take a look at the chessboard here, I think I'm already up some pawns, and I have this cool fork knight takes e5, so by making a move, I'm declining your draw. I should feel confident to win my better position. You're right. In fact, after you play knight takes e5, that's a check, so suddenly I realize the computer is not going to let me go gobble that queen on d1. I am in check. You have destroyed my right to castle, and your queen is about to get active. So you know what? I'm going to give you another chance to realize that I'm not happy, and you need to make me happy by giving me a draw right now. Uh, no. Not going to do it. I'm not going to be pressured into accepting a draw that I don't want. So I'm going to make you make your next move. And when you do, you can believe I am not going to accept that draw. I'm just going to make a move. I'm going to take your bishop. Now I'm already up a piece. I'm up some pawns. I'm about to have a safer king. I'm not going to feel pressured to accepting your second draw offer. So I've learned that I'm not allowed to just pester you with draw offers, but let's give it one more time. If I offer you a third draw, have I crossed any lines yet? Have I broken any rules by pestering you one more time to try to give me that half point? I feel like you have. In fact, Papa Bear, if we were playing an over-the-board tournament, I would ask the tournament director to come over and actually ask you to stop because this is considered against the rules bad etiquette because you're breaking my concentration and there's no chance of me accepting a draw after the first and second offers were declined. So it's a good lesson. Use what you do on Chess Kid to take to your tournaments. If it's not allowed over the board, we don't want it to happen on Chess Kid either. Just try to fight back if you think there have, you have no way Go ahead and resign, but multiple draw offers are not going to get you what you want. It's like asking your parent over and over, and they say no every single time. All right, well, good point. 
Uh, I will stop pestering you with draws. That's my third lesson. But now that I can't offer you a draw, I should probably try to get some help. I think it makes sense if you're losing sometimes to call somebody who's better at chess than you. So I'm going to call up my buddy here, Magnus Carlson, and see if he can give me some advice on this lost position. Hey, come on. I'm supposed to be playing Papa Bear, not the world champion. It's not proper on Chess Kid for you to use any sort of outside assistance. That means computer programs, your chess coach, your genius five-year-old little sister who knows how to play chess better than you. You've got to fight your own battles. In fact, if you win with outside assistance, it can't feel very good knowing that you cheated the other player. Chess is a game played by a very small group of people, and if you get known as somebody who doesn't follow the rules, that could stay with you for quite a while. So it's much better to win or lose on your own and follow the rules. It's a great point. So now that I know that I can't call Magnus Carlsen and I'm not allowed to look at what a chess computer engine might say or even get my coach's advice, I know that I am 100% on my own, and that's actually the glory of it because regardless of what happens here, I'm going to learn something, win or lose. So as I'm fighting back here, I suddenly realize that on the point of losing, that's going to take away even more rating points for me. So that's, that's pretty frustrating. I think, I think I have an idea, though, Mike. One way I could get them back after this matchup of ours is I'm going to create a Papa Bear 2 account. And then when no one else is around, I'm going to log in on two computers, play myself with the Papa 2 Papa Bear 2 account and lose to the Papa Bear account so I can gain all my rating points back. It seems like the quickest way to get my rating back where I want it. Is that okay? Well, that's a pretty interesting idea. And a lot of times adults are happy when you show some sort of creativity. But this is actually in the rules. If you go to the bottom and read the FAQs on Chess Kid, kids are only allowed to have one account. And by playing another account that you own just to raise your rating by not playing real chess games is very much against the rules. And you know what, Papa Bear? If you do that, all of those games are saved in your history forever. So Chess Kid staff can pretty easily find out if you've done it. I would say follow the rules, only play against real humans, don't fix matches, and play your best chess in only the proper way. All right. Well, that's a, that's a little frustrating, but it actually feels good to know that after what happens in this little match of ours, I, I will get my rating points back the right way, only playing against other kids and other adults like you. And maybe if I win a few games, I'll get all my rating points right back. So uh, on that note, it looks like I might be going down here pretty soon against you. So before our game ends and, and the kids see you take me down one more time, what should, what should a kid do if they're on ChessKid.com and they see their opponent breaking the rules? Maybe they even see a teammate breaking the rules and they're worried that they might be learning the wrong things. What should they do if they see that their opponent might not be playing fairly, Mike? What would you tell them? Well, definitely don't copy that same behavior. What I would tell them to do is to have their coach or their parent contact one of the staff members on ChessKid.com, and they will be happy to investigate to make sure that all kids are following the rules and the etiquette and the sportsmanship that we've covered in this video today. In fact, we would appreciate you letting us know if you think somebody else is doing one of these things improperly. All right, well, there you have it, kids. It's a call to action for you to not only play the right way, but to also help your teammates if they get confused and lose their way along the way somewhere of what's the right way to play. You know, I've learned that a lot of the things you said to me today here, Mike, on Chess Kid, maybe there's not an adult there standing by reminding you it's wrong, but just about everything, every single one of these pieces of behavior from aborting a game, abandoning a game, pestering with draws, and then using outside assistance all of them would be illegal in a tournament, and that's how kids need to act on Chess Kid, not to do anything that they wouldn't do as if there was a whole bunch of other kids watching them or a tournament director observing their play, even if they don't like how things are going. Speaking on not liking how things are going, I'm pretty sure you have checkmate in one move. And, and I'm going to give you a, a virtual handshake, Papa Bear. <laughs>